If you want to draw and paint realistic artwork, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get the values correct in your art. Every color has a value, but sometimes it's very difficult to see if the color you have has the correct value you want. This video will show you several methods artists use to judge values for their artwork, as well as a couple of easy methods I've devised myself. I've also made a test to see how well you can judge colors when compared to each other. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, it's dedicated to showing you how to paint and draw realistic looking artwork using techniques and methods that have worked for hundreds of students I've taught over 20 years, from beginners to professional artists. Please tell the YouTube algorithm that my content is worth viewing by subscribing, liking, watching and sharing my videos if you can. I'll be very grateful for your support. Today we're just going to focus on one question. Is it the same value? So I'm going to show you 15 pairs of squares that will get progressively harder to evaluate. You will have 5 seconds to decide whether it's 1, the left square is higher value, lighter tone, they're the same value, or the right one is a higher value. You will get one point for every correct answer. I'll tell you the answers after each question. Uh, keep a tally on how you do and we'll see how you go at the end. Okay, let's go! Okay, so you've got five seconds for each um, question and then the answer. Um, we've got 15 questions, so keep a tally on your hands and maybe one foot. So remember you're looking for the lighter of the two unless they're the same. Okay, good luck, here we go. So how did you get on? If you're not sure, rerun the test and give it another go. So did you score more than 10? 
Did you get maybe all 15 right? If so, well done. Tell me in the comments below. There may be a couple that you're adamant had different results to what you thought, and that was deliberate. I put some tricky ones in there to try and trip you up. It's not always easy judging values of colours by eye, so to save you any more aggravation, I have a few methods to make the job easier for you when needed. Let's take a look at them. Firstly, there's squinting. You'll see a lot of artists doing this as they step back from their work. What this does is it reduces the amount of light entering your eye as well as your field of vision. Doing this blurs out low contrast but not higher contrasts of value. So in this case, a big difference of tonal value will have a more defined line dividing the two colours, while if the value is close or the same, the division should appear less apparent. This is very efficient and easy to do, especially while working in black and white, but as soon as colour or high chroma colours are involved, it gets a little bit more harder to see and distinguish between different values. Next, you can use a grayscale value finder, like the one I used in the Color Mix in Video 1 bracketing. Link up in the card on the top right hand corner if you want to see that. Again, this is still quite difficult to use, um, as with squinting, is to judge the correct values when colors are involved. Because when you're using it, you still need to squint to evaluate the contrast. It's easiest to use when comparing grayscale to grayscale. And then we have colored acetate sheets. There are some commercially available ones like this one, but you can also use normal acetate from stationers shops too, like this green one. But um, there are limitations to using these as they block out certain frequencies of light, i.e. colour, certain frequencies of colour. And so you can get in inaccurate results with certain colours. So, for example, I have a red mouse here. And uh, if you put the green one over the top, it, it kind of comes out a bit darker than it should. And if you put the red one over the top, it's a little bit lighter than usual. So I recommend not using them when there are bright reds or bright greens in the reference so portraits might be okay. And lastly, the method I recommend and use myself, if you watch the tutorial on color mixing using bracketing, link in the card, you will have seen me using it. The camera on my phone with a black and white filter applied. Reasonably accurate and accessible to most people um, with access to a smartphone, this method is my favorite and relatively stress-free. As you can see here, you can clearly see all the different tones of my months or book. I'll put an affiliate link in the description if you want to get a copy for yourself. I'll probably do a review of how to use the book at a later date. So your phone camera can be used when working from life or from photos to compare to your work. And when mixing and matching colours accurately, following my videos also in the card if you want to have a look at those. We see images mainly in terms of value and not so much in colour. Value is a scale of light and dark. It is how our brains have evolved to understand the shapes and forms of objects around us. It's how we differentiate between one object and another one. It's something that's been useful for us humans, for our survival. We can tell whether the dark shape in front of us could either be a harmless shadow, for example, or a deep dark hole in the ground. Oh. Oh. It's how black and white movies and photographs still make sense to us when we see them. Realist art tries to do the same to our brains as movies and photos do, that is, to fool our brains into seeing something that actually isn't what it represents. Like the blobs of paint on a piece of wood aren't a pumpkin on a tabletop. The layers of burnt wood dust on paper aren't actually a sheep's skull on a mantelpiece. They're all an illusion. The closer we get to accurately replicating the colour, light, shade, textures of reality, the more convincingly realistic our artwork will be. As realist artists, this is one of our main aims. So when do we want to see the values of colours? When is it important? How is it useful for us? Well, seeing values in colours is useful when painting from life or from photos, when you don't have a black and white reference to help us, when mixing and matching colours, when trying to emphasise 3D form in our work, we can uh, exaggerate the, the values, the contrast, um, for strengthening composition in our paintings through contrast or uh, silhouetted shapes, for example. Artists have done this in the past. But the most common time that you'll need to do this is uh, when you're working from life or from a colour photograph and you need to convert it to grayscale. So there we are, a few more nuggets for you for your bargain bucket of knowledge to help you on your way to becoming a better realist artist. 
don't forget to subscribe leave a comment leave your score in the comments um, let me know if you want any more tests and quizzes I'll be happy to do them um, and thank you for watching thank you for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next video